Okay, here we go. Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome. Rhonda Boyle here. I am your pro and evangelist member on the SOAR.com platform, and welcome to Coach Hacks. Today, we're going to be talking about creating a predictable lead source, and let me just tell you that if you don't have one, then it's going to be hard to really grow and scale your business. And I know that every coach out there needs a lead generation uh, source, a pool of regular clients. And so Clint Carlos is here with us today. I'm delighted to introduce you to him, or him to you rather. He has founded multiple high growth tech startups, primarily focused on HR and human development. And he also spent six years at Gallup as a partner leading global engagements and serving mm. as a trusted advisor to numerous for. 100 executives. We could not have anyone better as the chief revenue officer than Clint Carlos. Welcome, sir. So happy to have you here. Thanks, Rhonda. It's good to be here. Looks so, like we've got a good group on today. We do, and we have a lot registered for the recording. So let's just get to it. I am going to let you take the helm, sir. Awesome. Well, um, you know, I think we've got a manageable enough group here. We can be interactive. So if you, if you guys want to jump in with questions or comments, you know, feel free. And I always love to see your faces uh, when we're talking. So if you feel like turning on your camera, you know, you're welcome to. Um, this is, you know, this is, this is really about you and about helping meet you where you're at and helping you find success. And so most coaches, you know, have had a moment in time where they've said, you know, this is my calling. This is what I was put on this earth to do. This is what, um, where my mission is, where my passion is. And it's about helping people, whoever that, whoever that client is. And so for that mission to succeed, you know, what we want to do is help you take that mission further and reach, reach more of your ideal clients and have greater impact. So that's, that's the end, right? That's the, that's the end in mind, the goal that we've got. We're working with coaches and uh, <clears throat> excited to be here. So just by uh, way of providing a little bit of context, you know, we've done a handful of similar webinars like this, um, just kind of tutorials. One thing, you know, in speaking with over a thousand coaches in the last year, one-on-one -on -one, um, between me and a couple, and a couple of my colleagues, um, it, it's, it, I, I've discovered that most coaches, you know, are pretty new to the business growth, marketing, sales automation side of, of building a growing business. And so today's conversation is kind of a, you know, 101 level uh, overview on basics around what is a funnel, how can it help benefit you. Um, if some of you have been on other webinars, some of this content might feel like, uh, like maybe you've got deja vu. We're going to re retouch on some of that. Um, but as I mentioned, I, I want to get more familiar with where you're at in your process and, you know, we can kind of tailor the conversation to that. So I would encourage everyone to take themselves off mute here for a moment and just give either in the chat or give, uh, audio, uh, you know, verbal confirmation. How many of you can look to next month, let's say June, with fairly high confidence and predict how many clients you're gonna have for the month of June? Jeff? Only one's on contract. Okay. <clears throat> Who else? Anyone else? have a good prediction of how many clients you'll have in June. Anna, you've got a pipeline. So what does your pipeline tell you about how many clients you'll have in June? Do you feel like you've got pretty accurate? So you're saying you're expecting about 12 hours of coaching. <clears throat> okay. Melinda says not a clue. Well, great. Glad you're here, Melinda. Yeah. James? James I think I, that it's ahead, a, lot of a lot of coaches are in that place, you know, where they just yeah. don't have those numbers because you know what coaches do best, Clint. 
<laughs> will we coach? Yeah. So That's figuring right. this out is, is part of the issue, right? And especially figuring it out alone. That's what we've been, mm -hmm. most of us are trying to do. So. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we just had kind of an interesting conversation. I was on a conference call with Paul, my co-founder, Paul Allen, and a group of our sore strengths evangelists who are working to grow the strengths movement in their communities. And he shared an example, um, you know, and, and it kind of challenged everyone to say, you know, how many clients do I need each month to meet my financial goals? And, you know, that's an important thing to think about because that's maybe the starting place for how you, you can get to a point where you have a sustainable business, right? So if the answer for you is I need 12 clients a month, then that starts to give you some insight and direction into how many people you need to be talking to or engage with or as we'll describe here in a moment, in your funnel to be able to sustain your business and support your, yourself and your, you know, your family and meet your obligations. Um, so it's something to think about. Ask yourself that question. If you don't have a clear answer today, you know, with it over the weekend, think about who, how many clients do you need to have sustainable income as a coach? And how predictable is the number of clients that you're going to have in the next month or two months or six months? Um, because that's really what funnel building is all about. Uh, and I'm just going to share my screen here. It's about eating. That's what it's about, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> it, really, it really is. Um, you know, I love this, this quote. I guess it's by Mark Eason. Um, but, you know, Jim Clifton, our CEO at Gallup, used to always say, no money, no mission, right? We, we would do a lot of mission-oriented, you know, projects and work. We worked with faith groups and schools and nonprofits. Uh, but at the end of the day, no money means no mission. And so it, it's important at this stage in your coaching business to really think about the time and resources you've invested to become a coach, right? And Rhonda, like you said, coaches do best. What, what do they do best? They coach, right? They coach. Mm -hmm. But... To do that, you've got to get serious about growing your coaching business. And so we're going to talk a little bit about what that looks like. If you could either in chat or through in a verbal confirmation again, tell me how many of you have ever built a funnel, even if you, you know, have drawn it on a whiteboard or, or ever kind of looked at your prospects and your lead generation through the lens of a funnel. <clears throat> I have, Clint. <clears throat> Jeff, okay. And tell, tell me a little bit about that, Jeff. Is this, has this been a whiteboard activity for you? Is this um, something that you use regularly? It's a matter of building out advertising and then the advertising, where, where it's, the advertising is gonna go to from a standpoint of a lead page or my website and collecting email addresses and setting up calls with those clients and working on getting to be a client. Awesome. So it sounds like you're, you're making strides there, Jeff, and you, you, um, you know, you're thinking about this in exactly the right way, which is what are the stages of a client's journey where they first get to know who you are, right? So that's the advertising, the marketing that you mentioned. You talked about lead pages. Well, how do you start to educate them, opt them in, capture their information, know that they know about you? Uh, and then when you talk about email and some of the follow-up uh, things you're doing, that's really largely the nurturing uh, activities when it comes to once you've identified prospects, how do you nurture and, and progress them in a, in a systematic way? So. Jeff, how well are those different pieces of your funnel connected? So does, do you see clearly how many folks are in each kind of stage or where they're at? Yes, I do. And I have a couple different funnels that I've built, one on LinkedIn and one on Facebook. And I'm also working Instagram now too. Awesome. That's great. That's great. And so how many, how many prospects are in your funnel? Well, I have in the, uh, in the LinkedIn funnel, there's um, 1,065 as of this morning. And awesome. um, the other ones have less than that. Okay. 
And so in your observations over, the, I assume these funnels have been running for at least, um, you know, longer than today, right? Right. So what, what's the average time frame that it takes for someone to progress through the first moment of awareness to where they become a client? What I've found, Clint, is it takes me anywhere from 30 days to a year. Okay. So that's really helpful. Um, is that surprising to any other coaches on here? No, I'm seeing some hit, some hit shakes. Thanks, Gabriella. Um, so that's good. So, you know, the, the key is to be realistic about, you know, that process. And so the biggest error that I see um, most coaches make is kind of forgetting what I'm going to call the critical middle of the funnel, right? So everyone's talking – focused on getting ads out there, posting, blogging, doing podcasts, and doing top of funnel activities, which help get your brand out there. And then many coaches are focused on what's right in front of them, right? How do I pay my bills this month? So who's, who's hot on my list that I can close? Um, but where we lose inside and where we lose momentum is in that critical middle of the funnel. So from the moment they first become aware of you, all of the touch points that need to happen so that you know, as Jeff describes, if it takes someone a year to decide to hire you, right? Imagine all the times and places and ways they can get lost or they can get distracted or they can forget or they can, you know, meet a competitor. So unless you're intentionally guiding that journey, uh, you're going to lose a lot of folks at each step of your funnel. So we're going to talk a little bit more about the critical middle um, as, as we move along here. But... Um, <clears throat> I wanted to share just a little context. So, you know, I've built marketing funnels for years. Um, it's pretty much the only thing I, I mean, the main thing I depend on to grow companies, right? Um, Jennifer, who's on, Rhonda, who's on, they've built funnels in the past. Jeff's built some funnels. Um, we wanted to really figure out what is unique and, and how, to, how to build funnels at scale for the coaching industry. So for the coaches on Source Platform, Coaches like you out there, what's unique about that, that solopreneur world? What's different? What challenges do you face? What's your kind of awareness of the different marketing tools and technology out there that can help facilitate a funnel? <clears throat> um, and, and what are the major takeaways for this audience that, that we could learn? And so over the last few months, we've been testing different funnels. We've had some folks in a pilot group focused specifically on a funnel from LinkedIn. We've had other funnels for different coaching types and segments. And there's three kind of major ahas for me um, that I think are, are specifically relevant for coaches. So <clears throat> let's talk about what those are. The first is that you've got to start with the end in mind. And what that means is every piece of your funnel, every step on the client journey has got to be really tightly targeted and focused on your ideal client. Now, most coaches have kind of a loose de definition or idea of who that target client is. They might say, I'm an executive coach, or I'm a career coach, or I'm you know, a faith coach, or I coach youth, or I coach teams. Um, but I would suggest that there are probably nine or 10 levels of more specificity that a coach needs to reach before they can have an effective lead generation strategy and a high converting funnel. So a couple of examples, you know, one of our, one of our career coaches who's been really abundant in sharing her funnel and, and talking about her success and she's been part of our pilot group has gone so far as to name her, uh, her avatar, right? Uh, she calls her Roxy. Um, and she's put together a whole list of, you know, kind of what makes Roxy unique and how she will know Roxy when she sees her. And I'll just read a couple of the things that she wrote. Um, so Rosie wants her team to achieve and maintain results. Be number one. Rosie wants to maximize her time and have balance. Rosie wants to feel confident in how to lead her team from here to there. Um, she wants to be known as a leader that activates change amongst her peer group, be seen as a change agent. So that's a real, really specific mindset, right? Um, she wants to lead authentically versus from a place of stress. 
She wants to feel supported by her team and peers. She is between the ages of 30 and 45, earning somewhere between $85,000 and $200,000. She wants to make a difference in the world. She wants talented people on her team, and she wants to feel supported by her team and peers. Here's how Roxy's feeling. Out of sync, lacking balance, doubtful about herself, a little stressed out, stuck, maybe not sure if she's on the right career path, isolated, judged, misunderstood, jaded, disillusioned. She didn't sign up for this. Um, bitter, frustrated, frustrated at work. Here's what she doesn't want. She doesn't, uh, she doesn't want to play the victim, right? She doesn't, she may not be willing today to see the problems that she's causing. Um, she might feel a little enti entitled, divisive, or uh, intentionally disrespectful. Um, so, so that tells you a lot about Roxy, right? What, what is she thinking about? How is she feeling when she first engages with you as her potential coach? So until you get to that level of specificity, I'm going to suggest that it's going to be really difficult for you to message, to nurture, to connect, to resonate with your ideal client. Now you might say, well, I'd love to work with Roxy, but I'd also love to work with Ted. And Ted's got a very different set of feelings and beliefs. So that's all fine, right? But in the world of marketing, each funnel, every experience, every client journey needs to be custom tailored to the person you're talking to. So if you've got multiple target audiences, you need multiple funnels, multiple journeys, multiple experiences, right? And with today's scalable technology, it's really easy to do that. It's really easy to customize your messaging and, and your value proposition to each audience that you might serve. The biggest risk of not doing this is, you know, if you overgeneralize your value, if you look like someone who thinks they can serve everyone, then clients are gonna feel like you can't serve anyone. And that's just the cold truth. Now, I get the mentality for coaches that are starting out, they're trying to get up to capacity, and it's so tempting to say, I can help anyone. It's so tempting to say that. Um, you know, and, you, and if, if you're a great coach, you can have impact in mul with multiple types of audiences, but not everyone, right? And, and you certainly can't consistently generate leads and convert clients if you're not laser focused on this. So, Sorry to kind of beat a dead horse, but it's really the foundation upon which an entire marketing strategy, <clears throat> lead, lead gen process, and funnel all rests, right? So think about why that might be important. Well, let's think of the top of the funnel. So lead generation, right? If you're posting on LinkedIn, the content of your post, the image of your post, um, who you tag in that post, you know, whether it's a post or an article, um, who you're connected to on LinkedIn to see those posts, all of those variables are influenced by who you're really going after. You might determine based on your audience that LinkedIn isn't the right place to go. So you might think about, well, what Facebook groups are they in, right? What communities are they in? Um, what Instagram accounts are they following? What podcasts do they listen to? What conferences are they attending? What coffee shops do they hang out at? What associations are they members of, right? Really hard to answer that question if you coach anyone. But if you coach Roxy, you can answer all of those with, with high specificity. So <clears throat> here are six questions that can help you determine your Roxy. The first is, who do you have a mission to serve? And you might go so far as to say, if you weren't getting paid, would you still help these people because you just care that much? Um, no, it doesn't have to be the case, right? <laughs> but it's a good kind of just judge or, or uh, gauge on, on whether you can have deep impact with this audience. The second thing is where have you had the most impact uh, or success in the past? And I'm just going to put a little bit of a qualifier there. If, if you can't point to tangible outcomes, measurable ROI, or very significant specific examples and stories, then you probably haven't had the success you think you've had with that audience. So challenge yourself. Um, one thing that can be helpful there is something that I, I'm borrowing from one of our evangelists named Jill Wesley in the Bay Area. She teaches us to, to create a story bank. A story bank is 
a repository or a list of 30 or, or more of the best stories of impact that I've got at the ready, right? I've kind of gone through and crafted and, and prepared a message and a story to tell that relates to whatever I do. And in this case, um, drawing on those stories will tell you a lot about who your niche ought to be. The third point is which industry and or roles <clears throat> do you have the highest fluency in? I'm gonna add a point here and that is what life transitions or life circumstances do you have the highest fluency in? So, you know, I think I, I've talked with some coaches about this. Most clients are not eager to hire a coach when they're super content with the status quo and they're kind of in a rut, right? They're going to come to you in a moment of transition or stress or, um, you know, some moment of frustration. So think about those transitions in life. Someone starting college, finishing college, going into their first career, getting their first promotion, getting fired. Uh, starting a company, selling a company, getting married, getting divorced, having kids, becoming an empty nester, right? All of these life moments where something's changing in our life. Are there moments in time where you have the highest fluency because you've been there, you've been living that, you've experienced it, or you've really helped people in those circumstances or those, those transitions? And are there specific roles or industries, right? If you have spent your whole career in aviation and you've got really high fluency around, you know, different models of, of aircraft and, and different procedures and, and you know, what the challenges are of, of, uh, of that industry, you're going to have a natural competitive advantage over someone who's never worked in that industry. Um, just like you might have a disadvantage if you've never been a sales leader or been responsible for revenue and you're, you're working with a sales leader as a client, not to say you can't have impact, but someone else is going to have a competitive advantage because they've got higher fluency there. So they'll know their pain points. They'll understand the, the environment in which they sit, and it'll be tough for you to outmarket, outsell, and outdeliver them. Again, we're looking for your best niche, right? Not any possible niche you can, you can have an impact in. Now, where do you have the strongest personal network? <clears throat> How do you know? How do you know where your personal network is? What do you think, Jennifer? What? Where do you have the strongest personal network and how do you know? Um, I, I think for me, it's amongst an MBA population, which are business leaders uh, that have changed careers with me in the past and have connections to other people who want to change careers. And I'm well connected in higher ed career services. So I can help other folks in higher ed to uh, do career development well. What I'm getting excited about is all of those higher ed folks are really underpaid and they want side businesses coaching and I'm really excited to think about how I can help them build that. So awesome. that's where that's where I'm going to be strong. So your past experience, your past mm -hmm. success uh, also aligns with your strongest personal network, right? Mm -hmm. So yep. LinkedIn um, for me. Yep. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. If you don't know where you're, you have the strongest network, um, I would encourage you to go to LinkedIn or Facebook or wherever you can, but specifically LinkedIn, I've done this numerous times, download your data. So if you go to privacy and settings and then you navigate down to your data, there's a place where you can download your data. And if you make sure you check connections, it'll spit out an Excel file of your connections and you can kind of start to look at that and say what industries are they in, what locations are they in, what job titles, what's, how, what level of tenure or seniority do these people have? If you think you're an executive coach and you find that you know, only two or 3% of your network are truly executives, maybe you ought to reposition yourself as a emerging leader coach, right? Or something else. So knowing that your network using data can go a long ways. <clears throat> And fifth one is kind of off, seems kind of obvious, but sometimes it's in conflict with number one, and that is who has the budget to pay for what you offer? And lastly, what do your own strengths tell you about who you can serve the best? Clint, can I, can I say one thing about the budget? Yeah. Um, I, I had a great conversation at the Clifton Summit last summer with someone whose mission was to help kids who were getting out of jail to uh, discover their strengths. And you would think that is, a, uh, by definition, some population that couldn't pay, right? 
And mm -hmm. so what he discovered was what are the other agencies that had funding to support that? What were the government entities and what were the uh, other people who wanted to support that mission that he could deliver? So his marketing wasn't to the kids getting out of jail who wouldn't have had $2 to pay but would benefit greatly. It was right. to the organizations that support them. Mm -hmm. So think outside the box on that one. I just want to encourage you. Totally, totally agree. Um, and, and am I saying your name right? Is it Anna or Anna? It's Anna. Okay, thanks Anna. Um, you're asking about the Facebook data. I don't know as simple of a way as LinkedIn to download your data on Facebook, um, but if you do any Facebook advertising, you can get really great demographic insight uh, into who's interacting with your post, viewing, and, and those kind of things. So that's helpful. Um, but you know, you can do it the old fashioned way, right? You can sync your contacts to your phone, export your phone contacts to a file, find the ones okay. that say they came from Facebook and then kind of put them in a spreadsheet and, and work through it. Um, but yeah. it's not quite as easy as LinkedIn. And LinkedIn okay. has limited this a little bit. Um, you can still do it, but they've taken out like contact information and things from that download. Um, okay, thank you. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Okay, so takeaway number one, you've got to really refine your niche. And, and, you know, I hope that coming out of this conversation, this paints a picture for how this will benefit you in changing the way you do lead generation and accelerating your funnel. The second kind of major discovery is, you know, you've got to be ready to sell your prospective clients what they're ready to buy knowing that most of them don't wake up in the morning saying, okay, I've got a few thousand dollars burning a hole in my pocket and I need to hire a coach, right? Almost always they feel like they have no budget or, or haven't even considered a coach. Almost always they have a pain point or they've got a goal or they've got a struggle or a transition uh, that <clears throat> makes them look for some solution to that, right? And they don't know that that's coaching yet. Um, and so what can you offer that if they're not ready to spend thousands of dollars to hire you as a coach day one, that they can say yes to at a relatively low price point that will keep them engaged and build trust and value and confidence so that they'll continue to progress down your pipeline. Um, <clears throat> we'll talk a little bit about this. Jennifer, who's a career coach, has seen this uh, strategy work, right? Resume writing is a tripwire. So they say they want a resume, but they really want a more meaningful life. <laughs> right, right. So they go to LinkedIn, they're looking for a resume writer. They really want, like Jennifer said, a more meaningful life, or they want, a, you know, at minimum, a more meaningful career, or they want a career in general, right? If they're in transition. So giving them what they think they need is an important first step in building value and trust you know, doing a $200 resume, our coaches who use resume writing as a tripwire from LinkedIn are converting almost 100% of them to, you know, real coaching packages over $1,000. Like, they're almost zero of them are only doing the resume. But it's that thing that gets the foot in the door. Here's another example of a tripwire. Everyone's probably heard of Vistaprint, right? You see ads out there all the time, free business cards, 250 of them. Or you can get an even better version for 10 bucks. Well, we know that this isn't their bread and butter, right? This is not how they're building a company. This isn't their revenue source. This is their tripwire, right? This is something that everyone wants, would love some free business cards, especially their target audience, right? Their target audience is, a, a new business, you know, a solopreneur that needs graphic design support, websites, other tools, and creative. And of course, they're going to need business cards. That might be the first thing they think they need, right? So let's give that away or do it really cheap in such a way that I'm filling my funnel with potential clients. So now Vistaprint has permission to market everything else they do to that audience. Any questions about this? Does this make sense? <clears throat> By either chat confirmation or verbal confirmation, how many of you have a tripwire offer today? Jennifer does. Anyone else? 
Okay, Anna, you do. Rhonda has one that's free. Anna, what's your tripwire? Um, I've had people interested in some consulting or long-term coaching, but they're not quite ready. And so I designed an online course using Zoom, and I made it, um, some of them are three hours, some of them are six hours, but it's cheaper. And it, like my actual mm -hmm. income goes up per hour because you fill the class mm -hmm. um, and then they get a taste and then they're like, okay, I want more of this. So usually every class I run, I'll get a couple students or not students, a couple clients out of it that are more long-term. Yeah. I love that. I love that approach. And do you charge, do you, what do you charge for that? Um, I just charged two ninety nine for a five week course, one hour a week, and it includes a one hour session. I'm actually doing it with Ken Bar Junior. I think a lot of you guys know him. Okay. Yeah. And then um, for some of the other coaching work I do, it's uh, two forty nine for a communications okay. class. So and I, I love always that. get at least one long term client out of it. I love that approach, right? You can deliver that. It's still profitable for you. So the best trip wires are still profitable, even though they're you know lower price point it costs less to deliver. It takes less time. Um, your, your model is live. You know, there's, you can also build digital courses that are available on demand. You can record webinars, make them available on demand. Right. Um, I love a tripwire offer. That's like 99 cents and you get some content because getting that client to just pay anything to stay engaged is a huge win for you. Right. So, um, in our boot camp, where we spend three months helping coaches holding their hand through building their funnel and actually design their landing pages and things, we'll help them build tripwires. And your model, and is one of the ones that we'll recommend depending on the type of coach we have, right? So, combination, it could be the live mastermind or, or a group workshop approach, could be the on demand webinars, e courses. So, we've got a partnership with Habit Technologies that will allow our participants to create a digital course and get free assessments and things as tripwire offers because many coaches haven't thought about or built these yet. So, um, most, most coaches. Right. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Can I, can I offer one more thing that might be helpful? Yeah, please do. Okay. Um, so this isn't for strengths. I just started doing it for strengths and I'm starting to see it pick up traction, but I started a Facebook group for my communications coaching about four years ago. And there's about 4,000 people in there and that's over 50% of my business comes from it and it's free and just do like live videos or like a quick tip. And um, when we analyzed it last year, it was over 50% of the business comes from there and it's totally free and there's archives. So it's also become a place where if people ask me questions now and I don't have time to get to it, I can just send them a link, say, join this group, which then gets them into my funnel. And then it's the file you want it's right here, go find it. And then, we'll do a lot of, hey, this is coming up, fill out the Google form and we'll send it to you. So now we're getting their information off Facebook because they're submitting it to a Google form and that makes the funnel cleaner because they're the ones that have raised their hands. So that's who we target. Yeah. And it's been great and it's mm -hmm. free. Awesome. How long has it taken you to get 4,000 people into your Facebook group? About four years, and it's been without a lot of intentionality, honestly, the yeah. first two to three years. Now when I speak at conferences, I talk about it, and I'll get like 50 mm -hmm. requests all at once, but it's been more word of mouth. I actually haven't talked about it nearly as much as I should. So. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. I love that example. And yeah. the thing I love about the Facebook group is that it's a combination of awareness, right? So it's actually top of funnel, right? Getting people aware of you through community. So community is one of the strategies for lead gen, top of funnel lead gen, that you know, we, we can talk a little bit more about. Um, there's countless top of funnel activities um, that can work depending on who your avatar is, right? Um, what are some other top of funnel activities or things that you all do to just let people know you exist, get your brand out there, start to get attention? Anyone wanna volunteer some examples? So here's, here's, here's ones that I hear from coaches. I Setting hear up SOAR events. Cynthia. Okay, Rhonda, SOAR events. Um, Cynthia too, that's, what, that's from Cynthia. Cynthia. Yeah. I All hear word of mouth. LinkedIn. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm reading. Oh, no, you're good. <clears throat> yeah, so Cynthia is saying, you know, publishing on LinkedIn, right? Um, 
post articles, two different strategies, right? Two different kind of readership groups, um, live events, networking. Um, there's countless of these. Uh, those are the common ones I hear from coaches. I'm going to suggest uh, a few more here towards the end of our, our conversation. I'll share a list of free lead sources that I've discovered, but I'll, I'll mention two today that are kind of uh, top of mind for me. So Paul mentioned that he read a book one time called 52 Coffees, and it was by a coach who was just getting started in his business, and he set the goal of just doing one coffee meeting a week for a year, for his first year, so 52 meetings for coffee, and to grow his business that way. So it, in the first year, he converted 10 of them to sustained clients, um, and you could see that that momentum kind of built. That's a really analog, old-school approach for lead gen, but it's – it's basics, right? There are things that can be done every day to start to fill the top of your funnel. In today's world, that coffee strategy would be super easy using Shaper. Have you guys heard of Shaper? Mm -mm. Shaper, spelled S-H-A-P-R, is like Tinder for business. You guys know what Tinder is? Tinder is a dating app where you swipe the people you'd like to meet and swipe no the people you don't want to meet. And Tinder connects to Facebook, and that's how it knows who you are and who they are and how it connects you. The difference is Shaper connects to LinkedIn. So it pulls in your LinkedIn profile. It pulls in other people based on their LinkedIn profile and their location. You say what you're looking for. They say what they're looking for. And when you mutually swipe, then you, start, you can talk to each other. Um, you can do 15 or 20 a day for free. Um, when I've used this app, I've, I'm not kidding. I've had at least 10 people a day say, yeah, sure, I'd love to meet up. So if you're wondering where to get potential clients to, to do a coffee, you know, I think in today's world with technology, you could turn that 52 coffees into, what is that, 200 and, you know, uh, <laughs> times five, right, for every day of the week. <clears throat> so 260 coffees, right? Shaper and, is for LinkedIn. Yeah, so it's a mobile app. It's, it's okay. a mobile app, and you just log in with your LinkedIn credentials, and it'll pull in your photo and your bio, and it'll know who you're kind of connected to, and it grabs your location through your phone, and then it will pull people up near you that you can swipe on, say, yeah, I'd love to meet that person, or no, I don't want to meet that person. And when it's someone that looks like they meet, they, they're your Roxy, it's a really great, easy way to get connected. And so that's one tip for you. Okay, great. <clears throat> so uh, we'll talk, we'll, I'll share a few more um, free sources here in a moment. Can you guys all see my screen? You see the funnel that I'm looking at? This one's a little bit more detailed than the previous one I shared. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the magical thing about having funnels is going back to the early part of our conversation where we were talking about predicting your revenue in June, right? Or predicting your clients in June. Unless you've got a funnel, it's really hard, really hard to make that prediction, right? But once you have a funnel and you're funnel is enabled through technology so that you know how many people are aware of me, right? How many people have seen this post this week? How many people have clicked on this ad this week? How many people, you know, have landed up on my website this week? How many people did I speak to? How many coffee appointments did I have? Once you know how many people are in there, well, then it's pretty easy technologically to start to watch them progress down your funnel. So at what level of engagement are they? How much time does it take for them to progress? What percentage of them become inactive over time? Um, and so each step in the funnel is about deepening your relationship and the value that you add, eradicating concerns, adding value, just like you would in a normal kind of analog, like human to human fashion. But you've got access to the data when you're using, you know, a technology enabled funnel. And so the reason that that is helpful in giving you a predictable insight the revenue is that you can start to look at it like this and say, okay, here's the 500 people in the top of my funnel and a fourth of them are converting to the next stage, right? Um, so that leaves 125. So your numbers may look different. These are just placeholders because they're kind of easy to calculate and think about. And by the way, that the average time it takes is about two days, right? From that first step to the second one. I'm just using made up numbers here for you just to illustrate the point. Okay, then the number of people that progress from that stage to the next is about 50%. So your numbers drop from 125 to 62. 
and you can start to see, well, how long or how many touch points does it take for them to get there? Okay, if 20% of them it advance to the next step, maybe that next step <clears throat> requires a little bit more time or commitment or information from them, right? So this step on your funnel might be attend a webinar, or it might be download this thing, or it might be subscribe to my email new newsletter. If you're losing 80%, in that stage, then you've gone from 62 to 12, right? Um, and if you know, you're know you losing 90% in that kind of last and final stage, where let's say for every 10 proposals or every 10 contracts you send out, every 10 price or estimates you give, one of them lands, then now you know, okay, it takes 500 prospects to get to one client. So if my goal was, I think someone said, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> 14 clients or something like that. Okay, well you need 7,000 people that are learning about what you do and that becomes pretty easy. So if you're falling short on your metrics, then what you can do is you can go back and recalculate this data. Okay, if, if I can't get 7,000 people, how do I get twice as many to convert in that first stage, right? Where am I missing value? What's the, what's the missing piece here? Um, why are people leaving? Is it just, are they getting hung up on technical issues? Are they losing interest? Is a competitor coming in and stooping them? So you'll start to be able to diagnose these reasons. And so I'm going to go back a little bit to talk around what some of these steps in the funnel might look like from a technology standpoint. <clears throat> but any questions so far? Is this helpful? It is. <clears throat> awesome. Repetition the teacher I've seen it before but I need to see it again <laughs> awesome so I like to kind of browse LinkedIn Facebook Google and just look for ads look for things that have a call to action um, and kind of like experience what it feels like for a client right if I click on this ad what's gonna happen to me am I gonna are they gonna ask for my info are they gonna start tracking me are they going to start sending me stuff? Are they going to call me? I, you know, what does that next step look like? So it's kind of a helpful exercise. If you guys want to start thinking about and studying funnels, just do that. I mean, you're probably in a dozen or more funnels right now, and you might not even know it. I was about to say, mm -hmm. I know that we are in dozens of them. Yeah, we all are in funnels every day. So I just picked a few that I caught my eye. I'd never heard of UCAS, right? Um, you can, the reason I knew this would lead me to do a funnel is I could see a call to action there. It says, show me how in that red button or get your guide, right? And there's a link here. So pretty good chance that that's going to take me to a funnel. So I clicked on it and here's where it took me. Really simple landing page. Has everyone heard about landing pages before? And if some of you mentioned, I think Jeff, you mentioned it, but those of you who are kind of new to this, uh, a landing page is very different than a website in that a landing page is very, very focused on a single message, a single offer, a single call to action for a single audience. You can see why landing pages are the, the tool of choice for opting people into a funnel. Because once you've defined that audience, you know what kind of value they're looking for, what kind of messaging will resonate, okay, you can send them to a highly specific experience starting with a landing page where you start offering them value and asking for something in return. And this is typically the moment they opt in if they aren't opted in by clicking on that last ad, which can happen sometimes. So I don't love this landing page for a couple of reasons. Um, it doesn't tell me a whole lot. I have no idea what UCAS is. Um, they're kind of assuming a lot, right? It doesn't do anything to add value for me or build trust, but I'm just going to click on get the guide to show you guys what, step three in their funnel looks like. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So this is, I, t I told someone earlier today, this is kind of like, you know, someone trying to kiss you, not just on the first date, but like when they pick you up for the date, you know, go in for the kiss, right? Way too early. They're asking me as a, as a, as someone that came off LinkedIn to give them all this personal information before they give me any value at all. Right, so not the strongest experience. What makes great funnels different is that there's always an equal exchange of value. You're giving enough for those prospects to justify them taking that next step through your funnel. At this point, I'm breaking up with SureWeb and I'm exiting their funnel. 
Um, let me show you another example. So, and that's data they will appreciate. <laughs> right? Now they know. Now, yeah. the problem is I probably haven't fooled because I clicked on that link enough times now. They think I'm really interested when I'm just yeah. using it as a poor funnel example. <laughs> oh, my God. <clears throat> um, so, how many of you have heard of conversational intelligence? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yep. So, it's a coaching certification program. It's based on Judith Glazer's research into neuroscience. Um, so I talked with a coach recently, a friend of mine who is in the middle of his certification. And I said, okay, talk to me about the process. How did you hear about it? How did you decide to do it? What was that process? And so we really kind of like, you know, went back and forth, wrestled about every moment, every interaction. And he said, okay, well, if I remember remembering right, I, I saw something on Facebook, probably like this. Now this post I grabbed here is an old one. It's the, you know, the only kind of post like I found right away, but it's an example, right? I clicked it, took me to a website. I said, well, was it a website or a landing page? He said, it was, it was a landing page. Once I described the difference, he said it was a landing page. Okay, what did they want you to do when you got to the landing page? Well, um, I could download something. Okay, great. <clears throat> did you do it? Yeah, what did you have to give up to get that download? Oh, I gave my information. Okay, then what happened? Oh, I got an invite to a webinar. Oh, well, did you sign up for the webinar? Not right away. Did you get invited again? Yeah, I did, I got another invite. Okay, I finally attended the webinar, so I learned something about it. Okay, great. Then what happened after the webinar? Oh, well, someone called me to, to you know, ask if I had any questions. Okay, so that was another step in the funnel, right, the client journey. And then were you ready to sign up? No, I wasn't, I wasn't ready to sign up. Okay, so what happened after that? Well, I started getting regular emails every day or every three days on a regular cadence. Okay, how long did that go on? About eight weeks. And then what happened? Oh, then I jumped on the call with, with the program manager again. Okay, great. And then what happened? Well, I finally signed up for the course. So it's about a 12 week process. Um, not surprising, you know, it's about a, you know, three month uh, funnel. Um, but I thought that was a good illustration. So I, I, I wanted to grab one of their landing pages as an example. It's a, it's a much better landing page than the previous example I gave you. Um, and it's, it's what, what we call a squeeze page. So a squeeze page is a landing page. But the reason we call it a squeeze page is because we're cramming a bunch of content and information in to accelerate the steps in the journey. So if you know that your client will have five different questions, they'll want to know three different things about you, they'll want to hear from your clients, they'll want to see and experience something, they'll want to make sure you're an expert, then we're trying to squeeze all that into one page so that we accelerate that process. So maybe for <clears throat> um, my friend, you know, he could have gotten some of his concerns resolved in a few minutes instead of a few months, right? So this is a squeeze page. You can tell it's a landing page because there's a consistent call to action everywhere. There isn't your traditional navigation. Like there's no, I'm not seeing their actual website. This is a landing page. Here's the call to action repeated. One call to action consistently everywhere on the landing page. There's uh, the ability to watch a video over here um, of other people and their experiences. So building instant credibility kind of right away, right? Building trust. It starts to tell me a little bit more about the program. There's seven modules. I get ICF, you know, CCE credits if I do this. Okay, here's some research and some background. So they're educating me about why neuroscience and why, you know, conversational intelligence is beneficial. This comes from Stanford. Okay, that's credible. Here's a client testimonial. It, you see anything familiar about this button here? It's the same button, right? Same button is up above. So the next step in this funnel is going to be whatever I get to when I click get that get access now, right? Um, but I'll just show you the rest of the page. Typically a squeeze page is covering elements of education, confidence building, trust, credible third party voices. So you saw like logos of USA Today and Harvard Business Review that have, you know, endorsed this. Here's some specific info about neuroscience and about Judith, um, the world's leading expert. So, so go back to my friend's experience. He, he clicked on something on Facebook. He went to a landing page kind of like this. And then we talked about that whole process. Well, every step in that process was intentionally created for him as their target audience, a relatively new coach looking to specialize, looking to build credibility in his geographic location and demographics. And they knew that Glenn was their guy when they, when they targeted him. 
and you can see how that journey was guided with the very in a very intentional way and how each step for a client is trackable through technology when when you when you connect these things together any questions <clears throat> It's a, well, I, I was going to make a, a point that it has something to do that lo, the, the more, the higher the price, would you agree of the, the package or the, the way in could impact the time it takes for somebody to go all the way and actually mm -hmm. buy? Yeah. Absolutely. Which is why you offer the tripwire, which is the low priced something Mm -hmm. So that they'll come in and work with you briefly and have an experience of you. It's always about the experience of you. Yes, exactly. And the other thing, I think the reason that they use tripwires terminology is kind of like, you know, for security systems, a tripwire is something to alert you that someone's just come in, right? So yeah. the best buying signal for your prospects is that they, they're buying something now. So yes. they're more likely to buy something later. So it's that tells easier you easier to sell to somebody you've already sold something to. Right. Mm -hmm. That tells you that they're in your funnel. So right. um, let me share um, an example of one of our career coaches who we've mentioned a couple of times. Josh was doing mostly kind of bigger ticket career coaching, and um, you know he's he's been an executive headhunter and all this, but. He, we were testing a, an approach of driving people from LinkedIn's ProFinder to, to Josh in a new way and using resume writing as a tripwire. So we were looking for people who were specifically seeking resume writing help. We were responding to them on LinkedIn, encouraging them to go watch this helpful video by Josh that they might be interested in to help with their job search. So what this does is this gives them instant confidence that Josh knows what he's talking about, right? He's not some makeshift hang up a shingle kind of guy he's you know uh he's not a robot he's a real person right um it's an eight minute video it adds a lot of value and then we got a call to action book 20 minutes with josh right the next section is okay we're educating people well why might you want to talk with josh when you think you just need a resume well these are all the things josh is going to help with that maybe you didn't think about right um negotiating your income um, getting noticed, standing out, how you position yourself in the job interview, feeling confident, right? Well, that is a lot more than just a resume. So maybe I do need this, right? So you can start to see once you've got somebody on a resume or at, on a tripwire, educating them, and building trust can accelerate their path to buying more. So you see Josh's call to action is repeated everywhere. We made the button gigantic just because uh, we didn't want it to get lost and we tested a couple of different sizes. He's got some client testimonials here with their photos. So it's like instant credibility. So when someone comes from ProFinder, they looking for a resume, you know, they, they, they get a customized message. They sit to this landing page, they watch his video, they read his testimonials. Now they're ready to book a call with Josh. So this next page is, um, serves two purposes. One is, to get them to reaffirm that they're committed, that they're serious. So this is a quali qualifying tactic. To, the more people, the more times someone says yes to something, the more likely they are to be well qualified and say yes to you and you ask them to sign up and pay. This is uh, an embedded calendar. So we're, we're connecting multiple systems here, right? Calendly and uh, web, web meeting technology and landing page technology and LinkedIn so that it's all one seamless experience, all connected to a CRM or the database of his customers so I can pick a time, schedule my call. Okay, great. I'm going to confirm that. Boom. So Josh had to do basically nothing up until the point when someone lands on his calendar, picks up the call, has a 20 minute conversation and converts them to clients. So let me just play a quick video of Josh um, telling you his experience. How many of you would like to have that? To be honest, and, and I was really kind of dismissive, and I was like, yeah, most of these are probably just like bombs, and I said, all right, I'm going to take this seriously, and all I did was set a goal to respond to 10. That's it, 10 a day, and yesterday, I closed $2,200 of coaching packages, and today, I have two that are pending decision on a total of 4000 all right, <clears throat> so you gotta love Josh. He's you know super high energy. Um, 
And, and um, <clears throat> Jennifer, you've been part of uh, that same kind of test uh, pilot. How has that been working for you? Yeah, very similar results. Um, I get leads mm -hmm. every day and um, have been converting about just about 80% of the ones who actually get to a call because they understand what I do. So by the time they get to a call, it's just a matter of, you know, developing rapport and finding a fit and that's my specialty. So by the time they get to the call, they're really ready. No, a lot more people come through then actually get to the call. But those that get to the call are really at a place where they're pretty ready to move forward. That's mm -hmm. thing. I have a question, Jennifer, if you can just share with us how long it took you to, like how did it you test and sharpen and you were able to analyze the data pretty quickly and, and make changes to have a higher conversion rate? You know what, what's funny? Um, I actually just last night built a CRM through Airtable and I put in all my clients and who had calls and who I was working with and just, just last night figured out that it was 80%. I didn't know that before. So I'm not a highly analytical person. I, I was just doing my work, doing my work, doing my work. And I said, you know, it seems like most of these people are uh, converting. So last night I just counted and <laughs> um, realized that I had a really strong buy-in from those that I talked to. I wasn't losing very many of those that I talked to. Wow. So what that tells us is that your campaign or your funnel, if you will, it, it pushes them perfectly and all you're doing is closing the deal. They're already pre-sold by the time they walk onto your calendar. Usually, usually by the time they get to me, they're, um, um, because we're using LinkedIn, I'm using LinkedIn ProFinder, they're deciding between me and another career coach. And so what I'm specifically doing is talking from my strengths. This is how I work. I'm a communicator. I have connections. I'm happy to introduce you. I'm very relational. We're going to work together for a month or more. And I'm not going to tell you I can solve your problems in a day. It's not about the resume. It's about the whole strategy. This is how long based on what you said, I think it will take you. I'll be here to help. Um, so I kind of explained to people that I think it's going to take them three months to reach their goal. And, uh, here's the price for that. If they'd like to just start with one month, we can do that or they can sign up for the whole thing. And people almost always at least sign up for the first month and then renew. So I'm still figuring out the logistics of, you know, do you, do you pay for three? That's a lot for some people. Do you start with one, the business parts I'm figuring out, but, um, usually by the time they get to me. Um, they're deciding between two people and they've usually just talked to someone who said, just mail me your stuff. I'll mail you back a pretty resume. And when I tell them that I don't think the pretty resume is all that they need, um, they are pretty convinced and then they do more. <coughs> Thank you, Jennifer. Um, really, really appreciate that. Love working with you. Um, it's been, it's been fun and I'm That's excited amazing. that you're going to be in the boot camp as well. So we can refine this and build more funnels for different audiences um, Bob, looks like you're excited to get started. You're signed up for our boot camp as well, and I know yep. James is. Um, if, for those of you that are curious, we t we've taken the learning from our own funnel building, from working with Jennifer and Josh and others, and we've developed a foundational, accelerated three-month process to not only teach coaches how to build funnels and how to refine their niche, but we coach them. They get one-on-one -on -one coaching each week throughout the process. They get a virtual assistant that helps configure their technology, set up landing pages, do the design, host all that stuff. Um, and they, they get all of that as part of the boot camp. So if you guys are curious about joining Jennifer and James and Bob um, and Cynthia, um, who I, I see on the call. Um, and just me, me, me. <clears throat> yeah, and Rhonda. Rhonda's going to be there. Um, Absolutely. Just let me know. My email is clintatsore.com, and I just put it into the chat. Um, as a friend of Rhonda's, we've got a special deal to offer you uh, mm -hmm. for the boot camp. If you're already a SOAR pro member or evangelist, you already have a great discount. But friends of Rhonda um, from this call are going to get a $1,000 discount on the boot camp. Wow, it pays to be a friend of Rhonda, <laughs> I'm saying. <clears throat> so... Um, you know, if you want to read more about the bootcamp, just go to soar.com forward slash bootcamp. Um, and you can see our guest faculty. We've recruited 16 of the top coaches from around the world. Michael Daphne, Maureen Monty, Lisa Cummings, 
um, you know, Amira El Ghali, um, just great group of coaches to be on the faculty, share their experience building a successful coaching practice. Paul Allen, my co-founder and I are each going to lead one of the virtual sessions each week. So there's two virtual sessions, one led by faculty, one led by Paul and me each week. And then there's one-on-one -on -one coaching and virtual assisting throughout. And in three months, we guarantee you'll have a working funnel or, or you get your money back. So um, we're excited. And uh, this has been really fun to, to connect with you guys today. So glad that, you know, you all were very participative and um, love hearing about your funnels, Jeff and Anna and Jennifer. And um, any last questions? I've got maybe another minute or two before I've got a transition. Any other questions now? And uh, if you want to watch this again, I'll be putting it out within 24 hours and you can watch it again. And we sure would love to help you at have this kind of success that Jennifer and other coaches have had working their way through these foundational pieces that a lot of us missed along the way. And I include myself in that, which is why I'm going. I can't think of a better team to wrap around me and to uh, get it right. So yes, Cynthia, looking forward to that. And so there you go, Clint, thank you so much for being here today. And with that, we will let you go and reach out if you need more information and we'll see you soon. Appreciate you guys thanks. for, for thanks, joining Rhonda. me. Uh-huh. Bye-bye.